This, everybody, is the Chinese bayberry. The species of this is Myrica rubra. And Myrica rubra is known for being big, beautiful, tasty. They taste kind of like strawberry jam. They have a really cool texture to them. They are much loved throughout China. And I don't mean any offense to my friends in China. However, in North America, we also have Myrica fruits. And I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but I think the ones we have are even more impressive. Just look at that. Okay, might, might need to zoom in a little bit on this one. This is a North American bayberry. So succulent, so juicy, and the flavor is All right, all right, so <laughs> the ones in China are admittedly much tastier than the ones we have here in the US. However, the ones we have in the US can do something really, really cool. You can make candles out of them. Yes, I'm serious. Today, everybody, we are going to explore the North American bayberry. I'm going to discuss several different species of this fruit, show some really interesting ways that you can use the fruit and the plant parts. I'm going to go into the history a little bit about this, and I'm going to make a damn candle, unless I screw it up somehow. Bayberry candles have a long tradition that dates back to colonial America. Today, most candles that you find at a store are made out of paraffin. So like this candle right here, paraffin candle. These are popular because they are cheap, they're efficient, they don't produce a lot of smoke, they don't smell like a whole lot, they burn nice and bright. Paraffin is a very practical thing to make candles out of. In colonial times, people did not use paraffin candles because paraffin didn't exist yet. And back then, obviously, there was no electricity, so people needed a lot of candles. On average, a typical family would use between 300 and 400 candles each year. If a family was very wealthy, they might use beeswax candles or a candle made out of spermaceti. Spermaceti is a wax that is extracted from the head of a sperm whale. Both beeswax candles and whale wax candles had a bright flame, little odor, believe it or not, but they were very expensive. The average person could not afford those kinds of candles though, so they used the cheapest form of candle, animal fat candles. And this was cheap, but there is a reason why Yankee Candle does not make a beef fat scented candle. They didn't smell that good, they weren't especially bright, I don't believe, and they also produced a lot of smoke. So these were not like the best candles that you could use, but they were readily available for people even if they didn't have a lot of money. All of these options have a rather large catch to them. Well, with Bayberries, there is also a catch, but it's a different one. The bayberry fruit is surrounded with a fine powdery wax, and when you extract that wax from the berries, it produces a candle that smells amazing, it works rather well, and it's also cheap. You know, anybody, rich or poor, can go out in nature and collect these berries and make a candle. The problem, however, is that Making bayberry candles is an extraordinarily labor-intensive process. It takes a lot of time and also a lot of berries. It takes 15 pounds of berries to produce just one pound of wax. So if every family is using up to 400 candles a year, the math doesn't work there. They are a candle that evens people out. The rich or the poor, you can access this very special candle, but it is not practical for anybody to use it all the time. This is purely for special occasions only. I've heard that the bayberry 
historically has been used as a spice, and that spice is supposed to be very powerful. So I made some of the spice. In order to do that, you take the bayberries, you dry them out, you grind them up, and that's about it. Uh, I've heard you can put them in like a pepper grinder. I just used a mortar and pestle. And I'm gonna just put some on a little slice of cucumber here. Okay. Those seeds are very hard. You know, I tried to crush them up as much as I could, but there are still a few whole ones in there. And uh, you gotta be careful with that. They could break a tooth. Honestly, it doesn't really taste like anything. Uh, a little bit like eating wood shavings. <laughs> Touch of um, black pepper taste, I guess, but I kind of wonder if that black pepper taste is coming from just using a mortar and pestle that might have a little bit of actual black pepper flavor in the wood. <laughs> the bayberries, by the way, were sent to me by Austin. Austin, thank you very much. Austin was kind enough to include some of the leaves with this, and the leaves are also edible. Uh, historically, they have been used as a medicine, like most things, and uh, also, used to make a tea, and used in cooking. One of the comparisons I've heard for these leaves is that they're kind of like bay leaves, so you can throw them in a soup. In order to pinpoint just the flavor of the leaves themselves, I'm going to try it just with some hot water as a tea. So I took some of these, I dried them out, added hot water, and we've got the tea. As you can see, it is very clear and uh, the flavor kind of matches that. There's not like a ton of taste in this. Maybe you need to use a lot more leaves to get more flavor out of it, but um, the flavor isn't bad. It's got a slight peppery kind of taste to it, maybe a little bit like bay leaves. It's like chewing on a leaf. <laughs> Doesn't taste very good. Definitely infusing it brings out some of the more pleasant flavors of it. Eating on its own, I wouldn't recommend. Traditionally, these candles are burned on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. This is a tradition that goes way back to colonial times, but is still practiced today, especially in New England. Even if you do not live in New England, bayberries are a popular candle, popular scent that you will smell during the season. If in December you walk into a shop, you may smell this smell. You will know this smell whether you know it or not, okay? If you buy a bayberry candle and light it and smell it, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's that thing. It's that, it's that thing. Burning bayberry candles is not just done for the pure tradition of it, but it's considered to be good luck. If you buy a store-bought bayberry candle, nine times out of ten, there's going to be a little quote on that box that says this, a bayberry candle burnt to the socket brings food to the larder and gold to the pocket. So yeah, if all goes well at the end of this experiment, we'll see if I make any money. While we're on the subject of store-bought Bayberry candles, I think it's important that everybody knows that there is kind of a scam afoot with Bayberry candles, because the vast majority of Bayberry candles are not actually Bayberry candles. They are regular candles, paraffin candles, or maybe a beeswax or soy wax candle, whatever, with Bayberry scent added to it. If you really dig, you may find a Bayberry candle that is advertising Bayberry wax in that candle. But most of the time, even those candles are not 100% Bayberry wax, and they often will not tell you how much Bayberry wax is in the candle. In order to make sure that I'm going to have a real Bayberry candle, I'm going to do it myself. While I was researching how to make Bayberry candles, I looked at so many blogs, so many YouTube videos, so many websites trying to find the best way to do this. And as I did this, time and time again, 
I would see somebody go through the whole process of extracting the wax from these berries, but then in the end take beeswax or soy wax or some other kind of wax and throw that in the mix. Those people are quitters, and also this doesn't make any sense. It confuses me to no end why somebody would go through the whole painstaking process of extracting wax from berries only to then add in another wax. If you do that, it's not going to put any gold in your pocket because that is cheating. Now, I don't have a problem with you cheating, but if you're going to cheat, go all the way. Just make a candle out of beeswax or soy wax or something and then add bayberry essential oils to it and make your candle that way. Or go out and buy one. You know, there's no shame in that, but if you're going to make it out of the berries, do it 100% with the berries because otherwise, like, what are you doing? It, it's a lot of trouble only to, in the end, cheat. So I am going to make a bayberry candle and I am going to do it 100% with bayberries and I'm going to find out why people don't normally do this. In order to make the bayberry candle, what I did is I took almost all of the bayberries that were sent to me by Austin, and as per many a blog post, I took those, I boiled them in water, and waited for the wax to rise up to the top, and it did. It's been boiling for about 10 minutes. You see that stuff over there? See that crap? That is the wax. By the way, these bayberries smell good. I don't know exactly what that smell is. It's like a mulled wine kind of smell. This is actually starting to smell like a fruit. I've read online that when people used to make bayberry candles way back in the day, they would reserve the water as a treatment for dysentery. Well, just so happens that... Um, all right, let's... <laughs> huh. <laughs> wax <laughs> is coating my tongue right now. Um, that is um, very herbal, very bitter, doesn't taste like something pleasant. However, deep down into that flavor is that berry taste. So there is a good flavor mixed in with the flavor of like sticks and wax. I'm going to turn this off. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it on the counter until this cools down. And then uh, tomorrow, hopefully, some of this wax on the top will firm up. I did that, and it didn't really work. The, the problem that I had is that, for one, there was not a whole lot of wax floating to the top, and the wax that did float to the top was full of little berries and stems. I had an idea, so I took the bay berries, I boiled them more with more water, so it would give more room between the berries and the wax, and then after everything was like melted and that wax started floating to the top, I poured the hot liquid into a big container and I let that chill. That way that was not going to have any of like the berries floating to the top with the wax. And it worked. So I actually did it again in order to get more wax out. So I put all the wet berries back in, I added more water, I boiled it again, skimmed off more, and I got a little bit more wax. And then I did it again so I can maximize the amount of wax that I would be able to extract from these berries and here's what I got. The amount of wax that I have does not even reach the bottom line of my Pyrex measuring cup. There is less than half a cup in here and I measured my candle mold and it will need at least half of a cup so I'm like maybe halfway there. Austin was kind enough to send me quite a lot of these berries but they really do not produce a lot. So what I did is I scoured the internet for any place that I could possibly find more berries and for the price of $30 I got this. 
And these berries, by the way, are a different species. Mirica pennsylvanica. And uh, the ones that I extracted this wax from were Mirica Kepa. I forget. I put it on the screen right there. So we've got two different species. And now I get a chance to do something that uh, I wasn't planning on doing, but I can compare them. Let's try two different species of northern bayberry. First, the smaller one that Austin sent me. This is Mirica serifera. There's really not much to them. It's a little bit woody, a little bit herbal, but buried under that, there is a little bit of a berry flavor. There's a little bit in there. It's just hard to detect. But how does the Mirica Pennsylvanica compare? It's dry, it's chalky, flavor, is very similar like if you had a, a black pepper that was like really 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 stale like 100 years old might taste a little bit like that when you have the liquid that comes from boiling these there is flavor in that so maybe with enough of these used as a spice it would it would give you um, some flavor but uh, on their own it's really hard to tell These berries have been boiling for the past uh, 10 minutes or so, and you can probably see a little bit of like a green shine on the top. So that's the wax. And um, the good thing with this species of Mirica is that the berries are bigger. And because of that, I can actually strain them in a regular colander, which I think will be a lot easier. So I've discovered something. I've discovered that when you boil these berries and you strain the liquid off, that liquid is murky, waxy, and it has a flavor kind of like dirty bath water. So due to my stinginess, I boiled these again to see if I can get more wax out of it. So I strained all that murky water off, I added fresh water, boiled it again, and this doesn't look so gross. It looks kind of like iced tea. So I tried this again, and um, this is what I get from it. Not overall unpleasant. There is a flavor in here that is actually kind of good. I think on its own, uh, it's still a little too bitter. It's still a little too herbal. I wouldn't drink a glass of this. However, it got me thinking. There is another species of bayberry, and I think this one also grows in North America, called Mirica gale. It's been used as a medicine, but also as a bug repellent. So if you're like out in nature and you see Mirica gale, you can like crush up the leaves and rub them on your skin to keep mosquitoes away from you. It also has been used historically in beer making. Not the berries but the leaves and flowers were used to make gruit. Gruit is actually a bittering agent that was used before hops were really popular. For the longest time, gruit was the way to do it. And gruit is not just Mirica Gale, but it's also several other bittering herbs. And these are meant to add bitterness and body to your beer, but also to add uh, antibacterial properties. So yes, Gruet used a different species of Mirica and a different plant part of that Mirica, but it still got me thinking about this being used in that sort of application, and I think it'll be good. This has a, a it's a, still a little reminiscent of hops. It's got that little bit of bitter herbal kind of taste to it that on its own isn't so great, but I think if I were to make a beer with this, or in my case, uh, I don't drink, if I were to make a ginger beer with this, I think it'll be good. So I'm gonna do it. 
I have made ginger beer in the past on this channel, so I'm not going to go deeply into the details of how I did this. But basically, in order to make my ginger beer, first I take two cups of water, a whole bunch of spices and ginger, and I boil that down into like a concentrate. So with my bayberries, I did the same thing, but I used the second pressing of the liquid, and I added two cups of that instead of the two cups of water. And I followed the recipe pretty much the same outside of that. Ooh, that tastes sophisticated. That's what that tastes like. Hmm, it's good. It's really good. Um, it definitely has that kind of hoppy flavor, like a bitter herbal kind of note underneath the flavor of ginger. And there is a bit of a berry flavor in this. And I'm pretty sure that's not just from the ice cube that I have in there. It tastes like how it tasted when I had it straight from the pot, only some of the harsher flavors are now gone. So, you know what? That is one way to use these berries that actually does work and does taste good. You know, I've heard that people use the leaves in tea and people use the, the berries as a spice and I wasn't super impressed with those things. This though, I can see the use. If you were to do this without the ginger in it and without the spices in it, I don't know if that would be very good. I think it needs a little bit more punch to it. But as a back flavor behind stronger flavors like ginger and all that, that little bit of bitter herbal berry flavor, it works. Okay, it is the next day, and as you can see, there is wax particles on the top. And uh, I also reboiled the leftover berries, and there is some more in there, a little bit. You can see it on the sides there. A little bit of crap. That's what we want. And that is what I got, and that's with some liquid in there. There is really not a lot of wax from that. Um, <laughs> I got like a teaspoon, maybe? Like, really not a lot. I was hoping for more. Uh, and this cost me 30 bucks to get this much. So, uh, uh, I'm gonna try to do this one more time. I actually kept all of the bay berries that I had uh, before. All the Mirica Serifera? And uh, I put those in the freezer after I used those. So, I'm gonna take those berries and these berries. I'm going to boil them all together and give it like one last shot to try to get more wax out of this. The problem might be just like that I'm doing this wrong. I mean I'm not following it the way that people typically do it. Typically they just fill, fill a pot of water and then they separate the wax off the top. But when I do that like all the wax just sticks to the berries and it clumps up and it doesn't really separate so easily. Uh, so doing it this way, like straining it out, is like my idea of like trying to get around that. But I think what happens when I strain it out this way is that the wax doesn't have anything to grab onto. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do it my way again. <laughs> and this time I'm going to put something like in the bin. That way just, just to see if like maybe it'll attack that thing. This might work. I have no idea. But if I can get just like one more teaspoon of wax out of this thing, then I can make a candle. And I'm so close. Well then, this has cooled down and it kind of worked. The, uh, the bottoms of these lids, which I floated on here to collect wax, have collected wax. And I also added more water to it and went for one more round. And as you can see, there is more wax to be had, and I'm so tired of this. <laughs> I'm so tired of this. This has been such a 
pain to do. It's taken so long. But I think with like the little bits of that I can scrape off of here and here and everything else, I probably have enough. I should have enough. I don't care if I don't have enough. I'm done. So I've got just under half a cup, and inside there is also a whole lot of grit. I did it this complicated way to try to reduce the amount of grit that would be in here, and it's, yeah, there's still a lot in there. So I need to purify this, because if I were to make a candle with this as it is, it would just be like full of crap, and not just any crap, flammable crap. So I'd probably start a house fire if I used a candle made out of this as it is. So I'm going to put this in a double boiler, uh, which for me is going to be a tin can with a pot of uh, water on the stove. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, okay, it works. So I thought that I had a full candle, and then uh, this started happening. This is leakage coming out of the bottom of it, and what that is, is not wax. That is any kind of liquid that was still inside that um, stuff when I heated it up. I thought that I evaporated it all, but uh, apparently not. So like all the wax is floating to the top, all of the liquid is leaking out of the bottom. And there's also quite a bit of sediment in there, <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't do the best job, guys, but um, it looks like I'll at least have a partial candle at the end of it after this is all done falling out of it. Alright, <laughs> so, yeah, it's maybe not a full candle, but, you know, it is what it is, and, um... Yeah, we're not done yet. We're not fully out of the woods because one other reason why a lot of people will make bayberry candles and then mix the bayberry wax with beeswax or soy wax or something else is because bayberry wax on its own is supposed to be rather brittle, which means getting it out of this mold might be a little difficult. So... I'm going to have to be careful. This is my first time making a candle, by the way. So, um, yeah, I'm likely going to screw this up, and I really don't want to do this again. Some of the sludge collected at the bottom. Oh. Beautiful. Oh my god, it worked. <laughs> kind of. Oh, yeah, you can see there's still some sediment in it, and it's a lot of sediment on the top, but, and there's a crack in it, but <laughs> it worked. You know what? Making this thing sucked. It took a lot of time, a lot of effort. I've been trying to make this thing for, oh, like a week now? <laughs> I've been working on this for so long. But you have to admit, that's pretty cool. This is a candle that is made 100% out of fruit. 
amazing. I, I didn't do a great job at this. I know. I'm sure I could have done it better. But in the end, it is a candle made of fruit. And that is what I wanted. And um, yeah, I, I'm happy with this. Let's put it over here so we can keep an eye on it. <laughs> it's, it's crackling a little bit because it's not the most um, pure wax. There is still some grit in there. So uh, this is a candle that I'm not going to leave unattended for sure. <laughs> Never leave a candle unattended, but especially one that can easily catch fire like this one. <laughs> I love stuff like this. I love when you can take a fruit and do something with it that is not just eating it, not just cooking with it, but doing something like totally out there. You know, in the past, I've talked about fruit that can be used as decorations, that's used for making jewelry out of, that's used for making like bowls and cutlery out of, for making soap. There's so many interesting things that you can do with some fruits, and this might be the most interesting one. This was very difficult to do. This took a lot of time to do, and I, in the end, I didn't do a great job. <laughs> but you know what? I'm still very pleased with the results here, and I definitely have learned a lot today. This has been a really interesting experience for me. I hope it was interesting for you, and I will see you all next time. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye. A nickel? Really? I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Bill T and Bootbot. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. This is how I managed to keep this channel going, so it is a huge help to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can help the channel and get some cool stuff in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos. There's actually over 100 of them already that you can get access to. Uh, there's a level where I'll send you stuff in the mail. You gotta check it out. There's more information about this down in the description below.